who you are, let me show ya Don't know you a star, let me show ya Greatest by far, let me show ya Don't know who you are, let me show Hey, shalom everybody. So uh, my name is Officer Jonah. We're with Israel United in Christ. And uh, the brother allowed us to come and give a presentation on black history in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Anybody in here believe in the Bible? You believe in the Bible? Y'all believe in the Bible, right? So, if I was to ask y'all, what is y'all race according to the Bible? What would y'all say? What's your race? You say you're an Israelite. Okay. What about you, my brother? You say a Jew? You say you're a Jew. What about you, my sister? What's your race? Say? You say none? So you're not like black African American? You know you're, black African. you're black African American, right? What about you, my sister? I'm brown. You're black, right? Okay. You're brown. You're brown. Okay. So the question is this. For us who say that we are brown or black, where is that in the Bible? Where do you find those names in the Bible? Do you find it anywhere in the Bible, sister? Not that I can recall. I can say it again? Not that I can recall. Not that you can recall, right? So the question is, what does God call our people? You're not sure. All right. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. We have been taught a lot of lies in the Christian church. Starting after we got out of slavery. We've been taught that we was African Americans. We've been taught that we are uh, Negroes, colors. All these different names we was given, but we don't know who we actually are according to the Bible. So this is going to tell you how God feels about our people, right? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So the Most High is speaking to his chosen people. He said they are holy people to him, read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Read on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Bible says God chose a certain people above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Have you ever heard that God chose someone above others? You never heard that, right? Because in America we was taught equality. In um, in the school, they teach you uh, liberty and justice for all. Everybody is equal, right? But if everybody is equal, why was the black man and the black woman put in slavery? That's the question. That's a question that never been answered to our people. Why were we put in slavery? So read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the thing is, God chose us above everybody. So in order for him to choose us, he has certain requirements for us to be above everybody else. Get that in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. So he said, if you obey the voice of God and you keep all of his commandments, read, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So that's the stipulation. He said, you people, if you keep my commandments, I'm going to set you above everybody. So there's no such thing as equality. There's a certain group of people that was chosen by God, and if they keep his commandments, they're going to be above everybody. Now read that in verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. But if you don't listen to God, read. To observe, to do all his commandments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake you. What did he say? What come on you, sister? You heard what he said? No, I'm sorry. I was talking about I was saying. Read it again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if we don't listen to the voice of God, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. And his statutes, which I command thee this day. What's going to happen for our disobedience? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So on one side, we just heard the blessing. He said, if you keep my commandments, I'll set you above all people. But he said, if you break my commandments, you're going to be cursed. Now, is a curse good or bad? 
it's bad, right? So let, let me show y'all what these curses are for. Read verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Uh -huh. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So these curses will be on God's chosen people for a sign. Read. And for a wonder. Uh -huh. And upon thy seed forever. It's going to be on them for a sign, for a wonder, and upon their seed forever. So how did, what does a sign do? A sign helps you identify something. The only reason I know Walmart is Walmart because it has a sign on the top. The reason I know that that's airline because it has a sign. So it says these curses will be on God's chosen people for a sign to let you know that they broke this command. And it identifies who they are today. So the, my, before I even start showing y'all this, can y'all tell me some things that black people went through in America? And we'll see if we can find it in the Bible. Discrimination. You got anything, my sister? You're not sure? Any of y'all brothers got something? What's some things that black people go through today? You got it? You got some? Incarceration. Incarceration. I'm going to show y'all both of that. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 7 to 16. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Uh -huh. Cursed shall thou be in the city. So one curse on God's people said they will be cursed in the city. In the city of Baton Rouge, what people are doing the worst? What people feel the prisons? What people feel the morgues? You understand? Black people. We the ones that's cursed in the city. We the ones that feel the ghettos. Read. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. We was cursed in the cotton field. We was cursed in the sugar cane field. We was the one having to pick cotton. We wasn't the one sitting on that horse. We was the one who had to pick so many pounds of cotton. If we didn't, we was going to get whipped. And guess what? That field is talking about the work field today. Because the sister just said, lack of jobs, discrimination, last hire, first fire. That's what happened with black people. We fill up the line for food stamps. We fill up the line for all this type of assistance because we can't afford basic necessities. That's a curse on our people. And you just mentioned something. You said incarceration. That's another thing in the Bible. Get it at Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 22. One thing you're going to realize is that this Bible is not a universal book. This Bible is directed towards one group of people. Because when you grow up in a Christian church, you watch the Ten Commandments movie, movie and all these other different movies, The Passion of the Christ, and they have you believing that everybody in the Bible is white. But all the problems that we read is about black people. Isaiah 42 and 22. Book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22. But this is the people robbed and spoiled. So this is talking about God's chosen people. They are robbed of their heritage. They are robbed of their wealth. And they are spoiled. Read. They are all of them snared in holes. They are all snared in holes. They got different traps set up to keep the black man in prison. To keep the black household with single mothers. Without fathers in the household. Read. And they are hid in prison houses. Where well, are they hid? In prison houses. Didn't you just say incarceration rates in the black community is sky high? The Bible just said we are hid in prison houses. That's a curse that's on our people because we continue to disobey God's commandments. Now go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to bring out some more of those curses. 28 and we're going to read verse uh, 37. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt be an astonishment, uh -huh. a proverb, and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. So the scripture say a curse that will be on the Israelites is there will be a what? Read it again. And thou shalt become an astonishment. They're going to be an astonishment. Whenever you see these people, it's going to be like, wow, what the, what the heck is going on with these people? You got the men sagging the pants. You got the women dressing out of order. The men selling drugs to their own people. Read. A proverb. A proverb is a wise saying. Like one of the wise sayings some of y'all probably heard is, if you want to hide something from a black man, where you put it? You put it in a book. Negroes love chicken and watermelon. That's all proverbs against our people. Read on. And a byword. And a byword. A byword is something that you call outside of your God-given nationality. Negro is a byword. Can I say the N-word? Yeah, what you 
race. Nigga is a byword. Colored is a byword. These are all words that we are called outside our God-given race. Now, all those words I just mentioned about Negro and Negro, all that means is black. That's all it means. But they call us that because they wanted us to depart from our true race. What you got, my brother? I want to know how the white man gets all these problems. That's a good question. How did the white man get so much power over us if we God's chosen people? Right. Now remember, oh, no. right, that's a good question. That's a good question. That's, that's, what we read reading now is the curses. We're going to stay in that same chapter. I ain't going to get y'all. Oh, no, no, no. You want to be right on track. Go to verse 49. Read verse 43. It's the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 43. Uh -huh. The stranger that is within thee. So the stranger that is within you, the strangers that's around you, we shall get up up, shall get up above thee very high. They say they're gonna get up above you very high. Read. And thou shalt come down very low. And you're gonna be at the bottom of society. So this includes the Chinese man. Whatever you want, some chicken fried rice, who you go to? You go to the Chinese man. Whatever you want something from the stove, the gas station, the Arabs on it. You understand? The white man, you want a driver's license. You want anything. You have to go to your enemies. You want a loan. You say he shall get up above you very high, and you're going to come down very low. Read on. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt not lend to him. Read on. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. They say he shall lend to you, but you ain't going to lend to him. That's Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 43 through 44. That's a curse that was placed on our people. We're supposed to be at the top. But because of our disobedience, God put our enemies over us. And now we got to go to them for loans. We got to go to them for housing. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43 through 44. So, they got more on that? Yes, sir. All right, jump down to verse 47. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So this is still answering your question. He said, because we didn't serve God with joyfulness for the abundance of all things, because this earth was created for us. We're the people that's supposed to be ruling this world. We're supposed to be the world's superpower. So he said, because we didn't keep God's commandments in joyfulness, read on. In jo with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, uh -huh. therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. That's why our enemies got up above us. Now we have to serve our enemies. And it's going to tell you how. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who sent them against us? Which the Lord shall send against thee. So the Lord, everybody that's over us in his life today, the Lord sent them against us. And the Bible said that they're our enemies. Read on. In hunger. So whenever we want something to eat, we got to go to our enemies. Walmart, Winn-Dixie, Super One, Kroger's, Albuquerque's, that's all owned by your enemies. Read on. And in thirst. And in thirst. The water we drink, you have to pay a water bill. In your house, you got to pay a water bill. If you don't pay that water bill, guess what they're doing? They shut that water off. And who owns that? So-called white man. Your enemy according to the Bible. Read on. And in nakedness. The clothes that we have on our back, we got to get it from other nations. You understand? Read. And in want of all things. Anything we want, we got to go to our enemies. Anything we need. You want an education, like the sister said. You want a job. You have to go to your enemies. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. The question is, who put chains of iron on our neck? Who put chains of iron on our neck in slavery? That's what a yoke of iron is. The so-called white man. We had chains on our neck in slavery. What shall this enemy do? Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Your enemy will put a chain of iron on your neck. Read. Until he have destroyed you. Until he destroys you. Now the question is this. Do we still have chains of iron on our neck? Do y'all see that on my neck? Can you see a chain of iron on my neck? You can't see it, right? But I see, I see the point you make. We don't have those physical chains of iron on our neck. Because why? Until when? Until he have destroyed Until me. we are destroyed mentally. We no longer call ourselves Israelites. We call ourselves African American. We call ourselves Negro. We kill our own brother that lived down the street from us. Over a simple disagreement. 
that shows that we destroyed in the mud. That's why they're comfortable taking the chains off our neck. The reason you put a dog on a chain is so he don't run away, so he don't bite nobody. But guess what? When he sit, when you tell him to sit, when he roll over, when you tell him to roll over, and he don't go past that grass, you know, okay, I can take this chain off his neck. Because he's trained now. They're comfortable with us. That's the purpose. They destroyed us mentally. Whole it. Get Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Just to top it off with a scripture showing how we destroyed as a people. Once they took them chains off, we forgot who our God was. We forgot what laws we have to keep. We forgot where we belong, where we come from. Read that. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Uh -huh. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The Bible says God's people is destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That's why he said he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until you are destroyed. So how are we destroyed? We're destroyed because we lack Knowledge. Now I'm going to just do a test real quick. Y'all mind if I do a test? What is knowledge, my sister? What is knowledge according to the Bible? Not sure, right? What about you? You know, anybody know? Anybody know what knowledge is? We don't know what knowledge is, right? We forgot the knowledge of God. That shows you we've been destroyed through conditioning of religion, politics, all these different things that we learn here in America that was used to destroy us. But well, watch this. Read this is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Uh-huh. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So it says the priest's lips should keep knowledge, right? Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. What do they seek at his mouth? The law at his mouth. So what's the knowledge? What's the knowledge? The law. The laws of God is the knowledge. You understand? So we've been destroyed from knowing God's laws. So go back to 28, verse 48. So we're still dealing with that enemy that this brother asked about. How did the white man get sent over us? Number one, because we broke his commandments. Read verse 49. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. Uh -huh. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So it said the Lord will bring a nation against us from far. On this side of the earth, we had the Native American Indians, which descend from the northern kingdom of Israel. You understand? And we were on the west coast of Africa, some of us were spread in Europe. He said he will send a nation against us from far, read. From the what? From the end of the earth. Uh huh. As swift as the eagle flies. As swift as the what? As swift as the eagle flies. What is the bird for America? What's the mascot? The eagle, right? The bald eagle. That's what, that's what the Bible is telling you. As swift as the eagle flies, read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So we didn't understand English. We didn't understand Spanish. We didn't understand all these languages that they came and met us again speaking to us. Read. A nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. Isn't the white man fierce? You gotta be fierce to put a two-year-old in a cotton field and whip their back and pull a father apart with uh with horses and tar and feather them. That's a fierce countenance. That's a fierce man that the most high sin against our people. Read on. Nation of first countenance, uh -huh. which shall not regard the person of old. They didn't care if you was old, read, nor show favor to the young. They didn't care if you was young. Whoever you was, if you one of God's chosen people, you was in them cotton fields. You was in that house making that bread, making that food, making that bed. You understand? Read on. Verse 51. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. Now right. Go drop down to verse 64. So that's a curse that was sent on our people. Nobody else been through that. Nobody else had chains of iron on their neck like we was. You understand? Watch this. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So wasn't black people scattered across the whole world? In the transatlantic slave trade, you had blacks sent to North America, South America, different parts of Europe, all over the world. Read. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So we, you can find black people everywhere across the globe, read. From the one end of the earth. From the eastern hemisphere, read. Even unto the other. Even unto the western hemisphere, where we at now. So that's the scripture alone telling you that God's people are right here in America right now. Who he was talking to in the book of Deuteronomy, read. And there thou shalt serve other gods. There, when you get to the, the other side of the world, you're going to serve other gods. We're going to show you those other gods, read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. In America, we serve other gods which neither us nor our father has known. This guy right here, 
that most people, who would you say this is? You would say that's Jesus, right? Most of our people think that this is Jesus. But our fathers never worshiped this man. This is not Christ at all according to the Bible. The Bible says we would serve other gods which neither us nor our fathers have known, read on, even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. And the top two religions in the world is Christianity and Islam. Christianity, when he says the wood, is talking about the cross of the Christian church. You understand? And the stone is talking about that common stone that the brothers in the nation of Islam worship. When you call yourself a Muslim, you're actually worshiping the rock. So the scripture says the law will scatter us among all people. So that's a curse to our people. But why is this? Read verse 68. Before we read that, my sister, how do we get to America? On ship. On ship. You say on ships, right? Y'all agree? Y'all agree that we came into America on ships? Let's see if that's in the Bible. Verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord will bring his people into Egypt again. What does Egypt mean? Bondage. It means bondage. That's what he just said. We're going to read it. We're going to prove it. Right? This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He brought his people out of the land of Egypt? Out what? of the house of bondage. Out of the house of what? Bondage. So Egypt means bondage. So watch this. Go back to 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord will bring his people into bondage again. With, with, with ships. With ships. You just said that we came into slavery on ships. That was a curse on God's chosen people for breaking his command. Let me say that one more time. So the slave ships that we was on. In a, in a, that came to America from Africa, what's going to happen? That's a curse. That's in the Bible. Have you ever heard that in church before? You've never heard that, right? But you hear it for the first time today in the Bible. We've been having the Bible for years. How old are you? 28. 28 years of living, you've never heard that before. Because they never taught you. We've been destroyed. We forgot where we come from. Do you understand? We say, with what? With ships. Uh huh. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. You ain't going to see nobody else go through this again. That's why if I ask you, has the white man ever came over here in slavery on ships? No. The Chinese man? No. The Arab man? No. Just the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read on. Go ahead, what you got, boy? Why, well, why is it that they don't teach people that in the church? Because they destroyed. <laughs> they destroyed mentally. Yeah, you did Isaiah chapter 29. What is that? I mean, they need to teach them in the church. They right. don't teach, they don't teach, they don't teach. Yes, sir, verse 13. Yeah, they don't teach that in a Christian church. Now, you, that's a question you gotta ask yourself. Why have I been in church this long? Why have I been knowing about the Bible this long, but I never knew that I was an Israelite? Because that's what this is proving. Watch this, it's the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 10. Uh -huh. For the Lord had poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. So our people are asleep right now. You sleep. You didn't know that you descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read on. And had closed your eyes. See, but our eyes are closed so we can't even understand. You probably read the whole, I don't know, you may have read the whole Bible before. But you've never seen that. Your eyes was never open to that. Read. The prophets of your rule, the prophets and your rulers, uh -huh. the seers had he covered. They, they, he covered so they can't, they don't know what this Bible is talking about. All they do is speak on uh, financial blessings. That's all they teach in the Christian church. And that's all they know because they covet this. Read. Verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. A yeah, book that is sealed because people, they can't understand this Bible. They, the Most High did not put his spirit on them yet for them to be able to reveal his secrets out of the Bible. You understand? If you are believing that the, this Bible is for everybody, then you don't understand what this Bible is about. And that's what the Christian church teaches. It teaches that this is a universal book. But now we're revealing that this is your heritage. Read on. Which men deliver to one that is learned. Uh-huh. Same. So the man that's learned, he said, men deliver this book to one that is learned. The one that's supposed to be learned is these pastors that go to these theology schools. Right? What do they say? Oh, read. Saying, read this. I pray thee. Uh -huh. And he said, I cannot, for it is sin. You don't understand it. I can guarantee you, you still go to church? If you go to your pastor and you ask him to explain to you Deuteronomy chapter 28, 
he ain't gonna be able to explain it to you. So, so basically, brother, they just be giving their own philosophy. They're giving their own philosophy, and that's what he's about to read. That's exactly what he's about to read. A reposition right there. That's what he's about to read. Go ahead. Verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Uh -huh. Say. Read it again. In the book what? And the book. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Uh -huh. Say. Read this. Uh -huh. I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. Uh -huh. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. So as much as black people say that we love God, right? The black people is the main ones. They got the choir, got the best choirs, got the pooping and hollering in the church. So we put on a show like we love God, right? Read. And with their lips do honor me. We say we love God. We sing all the songs. Go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. We removed our heart far from the doctrine of God. Far from the Most High's commandments. Read. And their fear toward me. Our understanding of God. Read. Is taught by the precept of men. It's taught by doctrines of men. That's why when your pastor go to these theology schools, they ain't teaching you nothing right. So your question was, why they not teaching this in the churches? Because they are taught by their oppressors to keep us asleep. The Christian church is just like how it was during slavery. During slavery, the, the white slave master set up black people to keep the other slaves calm. You understand? That's exactly what they did. And it's carrying over today. You know what I'm saying? To where you think you're getting the message of God and you're not. So the, 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 our fear towards God is taught by what? And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. It's taught by the precept of men. There's more? Yes, sir. Okay, you had some more. Okay, so I understand that this Bible is taught by men. Your first time today hearing that slave ships is in the Bible. We actually remember that. We, we was taught that growing up in school, that we was in slavery. We came over here on slave ships. That's a curse that happened to our people for breaking his commandments. Now the question is this, why everybody else ain't going through that? Why everybody else not getting punished like we getting punished, right? Just to tie it back to what we said in the beginning, we the chosen people of God. Get that in Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. So are, they, are other people not supposed to follow the commandments because they're not the Israelites? Well, everybody can follow the commandments, but the commandments was only given to us. See, the reason why God chose us is because the men of Israel is supposed to be the priests. We're the priests of God, and we're supposed to teach his commandments to the world to govern it. Okay. But because we didn't even want to keep the commandments, that's why he said the other nations over us. So the, the point now is we're the ones that's has to uh, that have to keep these commandments. You understand? You got something? Uh, Psalm 147, 19. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead, get that. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. Uh -huh. He showed his word unto Jacob. So he shows his word to Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He was the father of the Israelites. So when he said he showed his word to Jacob, his word, this Bible was only given to the Israelites. Read. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Exactly. Read on. He had not dealt so with any nation. He hath not what? He hath not dealt so with any nation. He didn't give no other nation this Bible. You know what I'm saying? Even though they sell it in their stores, they got it in their other Christian bookstores and stuff like that, that's for us. That's for us to learn and get reconnected back with our heritage. You understand? Read. And as for his judgments. As for the judgments of God, read. They read. Praise you, the Lord. You got to praise God for that. God chose you and your people above all other people. You understand? He chose us to be his people to rule this world. Now go to that name in chapter 3, verse 1. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Uh huh. Hear this word that the Lord had spoken against you, O children of Israel. So this is what the Most High God spoke against us. Read. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the Most High God only knew us out of everybody else. That's why he gave us his commandments. He only knew us. He never dealt with no other nations like he dealt with us. Read. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Therefore, he will punish us for our sins. That's why we're the only ones that went through this. Because God said he only knew us. Is that your son? Okay, go ahead. So basically, that's just like you, when you have a son. Exactly. Like, like that's his son sitting over there. Exactly. That's Jesus, that's Duke. 
And basically, when he tell his son to do something, he need to do what he say. Exactly. And if he don't do what he say, it's some repercussions for right. what is for him. Right. Exactly. And that's exactly what I was about to ask you. That's your son. You helping him with his homework. So you expect him to get good grades. That's one of your rules. Now, if he come home with D's and F's, and he say, well, so-and-so get D's and F's and they don't get punished, what you going to say? I ain't so-and-so mama. I'm your mama, and I told you that you better come here with nothing less than a B or uh, whatever your grade is, you know what I'm saying? So uh, so the thing is, that's how God deals with us. He deals with us because we're his children. Right. So he gonna punish us for our disobedience. You know what I'm saying? That's why we the only ones that went to slavery on ships. That's why we was the only ones on the plantations. You know what I'm saying? That's why we the only ones in the hood. Right. You understand? You got more? Yes, sir. All right, so the thing is this. Those few curses that we just read show you that we are the chosen people of God. But why are they saying that the real Jews or the people of God is white? Because before this day, did you believe that the Jews were white? You believe that the Jews were white, right? Why is this? Go to Jeremiah 14 and 2. We're going we're gonna to prove that that's a lie as well, sister. The, the Jews, according to the Bible, are black people. The Bible is a history book of black people. Read Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Uh huh. Judah mourning. So the real Jews are in mourning. Our people mourn when they got murdered in the community. You understand? We the ones in mourning. I'm sure some of us in here know people that got killed. You understand? The Jewish man, he's not in mourning. They own the Diamond District in uh, New York. They financed the slave ships that we came to America on. So they live in large. You understand? Wait, 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 wait. The Jewish man, the Jewish people, they financed the slave ships that had that brought us over to America. They financed that. Those people that call themselves. They call themselves Jews, exactly. They're the devil the Bible speak of. Right. They had a hand, they had a part to play in our slavery. And they're not gonna go and punch. You understand? They got more with what I had to read. Uh, Jeremiah 14 and 2. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Uh-huh. Do the morning. And the gates thereof languish. So the real Jews are in mourning right now. They're in a low estate. Read. And the gates thereof languish. The gates thereof languish, meaning that there's no judgment in the black community. When you judge your brother and sister, that means you love them. That means you correct them. Like, brother, pull your pants up. Sister, dress in modest apparel. Put the gun down. Stop selling drugs. That's judging your people. But it says the gates thereof languish. We don't have that going on in our communities. What's the saying? Snitches get stitches, all these other type of things. Keeping some kind of G code that you don't want to tell on your brother, but your other brother get murdered. You know what I'm saying? Read on. They are black unto the ground. What are the Jews? They are black unto the ground. The Bible just said that the Jews are black. Did you know that color was in the Bible? You didn't know that color was in the Bible. But we went all this time thinking that everybody was white. But they never proved that. They never proved that Christ is a white man. They never proved that Moses is white. Paul is white. They just told it to us and we believed it because we was destroyed mentally. But the Bible says they are what? They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. The Jews are black. Why does it say black unto the ground? Can you answer that for me? Or can you, brother? Why does it say the Jews are black unto the ground? You're not sure? We're going to show you. Read that. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Now, this is the beginning of the Bible. This is the creation. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What did God do? The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What was the first formed man? What was his name? The first created man, his name was Adam. So it said God formed man of the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? It's brown. The dirt is brown. But read verse 6. Verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth. So there was a mist. We know mist is water, right? There went up a mist from the earth, read. And watered the whole face of the ground. So the ground was wet, right? Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So God created Adam from wet dirt, which was dark brown. Read. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So according to the Bible, Adam is a black man. But when you see these pictures of the Sistine Chapel, and you got this white dude laying butt naked, touching fingers with another white dude butt naked. They got you thinking that's Adam and God, but that's not at all. You understand? That has nothing to do with this Bible. 
Adam is a black man according to the Bible. You understand? Go to uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Watch this. And God said, let us make man in our image. So the thing is, God commanded that we make man, that him and Christ make man in their image. Read. After our likeness. Just like how God looked, he created man to look like him. Read. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So God said, let us create man in our image. We're going to read this scripture again. Genesis 2 and 7. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Uh -huh. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So the reason why God created Adam from the dirt so he can be black is because God is black himself. God wanted Adam to look like him. That's why he chose to make Adam out of the dirt. But they make us believe that God is white and Christ is white and his people is white. But we here to uncover the lies. Just with the Bible. We just read a few scriptures that some of y'all may have never heard. You probably read over it, but you didn't know what it was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Go to uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. We're going to show you this. So my question is this. You believe before that Christ is white, right? You didn't know. You didn't think he was? Okay, so that, that shows a disconnect because if you know, if you don't believe that Christ is white, then you should automatically think, well, the Jews ain't white. If Christ ain't white, then the Jews ain't, right, ain't white, right? Before you read that, go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. We're going to show you something about what Christ was from. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. Uh -huh. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So it said that it is evident that our Lord, which is Christ, sprang out of Judah. Read. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So Judah is a tribe. So Jew is short for Judah. He said our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So Christ is a Jew. And we're going to see how the Bible describes Jesus Christ because we live all our lives I mentioned it earlier in a Christian church if your grandmother's still living you got that picture somewhere in your house you probably got it tattooed on you you probably got a cross around your neck with him hanging on there you understand but we're going to show you what the Bible says about Christ read, read verse 1 the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 go ahead the revelation of Jesus Christ so the real what's the root word of revelation read it again the revelation of Jesus Christ. The root word of revelation means reveal. The revealing of Christ. Why does it have to be revealed? Because it's been hidden from our people for centuries. It's been hidden since the uh, the 1600s, since the, third, the 1400s, during the Renaissance period. When I mean, they painted this guy, I'm going to talk about him in a little bit. They painted this guy as the image of Christ. Read that, read on which God gave unto him uh -huh. to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Jumped out of verse 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So this is the image that most of our people know as Christ. This guy right here. This is an accurate depiction of Christ. So read it again. We're going to compare both of them. Revelation. Let me get to you. Chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs we're white like wool. Jesus Christ, hairs on his head and on his beard was white and like what? White like wool. Everybody in this shop got woolly hair. This guy does not have woolly hair. He has straight, stringy hair, like dogs, like a white man. You understand? Already he does not fit the description. But look at this image. He has woolly hair. I'm looking, you have woolly hair on your head. You have woolly hair on your head. This brother right here has woolly hair. We look like Christ. Remember in the beginning, let us make man in our image. We are the people that was created in the image of God. Read on. Like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. As white as snow. That's not white, that's not woolly. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. What was Christ's first miracle? He turned water into wine. They called Christ a wine bibble. Christ drank wine. That's a, that's a uh, description in Genesis chapter 40. We'll read it. We'll read Genesis chapter 49. 49 and verse 12. We'll show you. Everything we go, we got that we can bring out today, we're going to prove it with the Bible. Why is it? Why does it say 
his eyes as not so far. Read that. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 12. Uh -huh. His eyes shall be red with wine. Christ's eyes shall be red with wine. Go back to uh, Revelation. That's all I want. Revelation 1 and start where you stop. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. White and woolly. As Read. white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read. And his feet. Now it's talking about his feet. Looking at Christ's feet, read. Like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brass is brown, brown. You understand? It's similar to the color of a penny. Brass is brown. But watch how brown it was. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. Read it again. And his feet. And his feet. Like unto fine brass. Christ's feet was like fine brass, read. As if they burned in a furnace. As if you burn that brown brass in a furnace. According to the Bible, Jesus Christ is a black man. That's a revelation. But we got another scripture for you too. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. Watch this. So we showed you in different places. We showed you in the book of Genesis that Adam and God is black. We showed you in the book of Jeremiah that the Jews are black. And now we show you in the book of Revelation that Christ is black. Now we're going to show you the book of Daniel. Go ahead. This is the book of Daniel chapter 10 Verse 5. Uh -huh. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, uh -huh. whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates. Read on. His body also was like the barrel. His body was like the barrel, meaning he had a green garment on. Read. And his face as the appearance of lightning. Because he had angelic power. Read. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Same man in Revelation. He said his eyes as lamps of fire. Read. And his arms. Now it said his arms. Read. And his feet. And his feet like what? Like in color. Like in what? Like in color. They tell us color not in the Bible. But what the Bible said like in what? Like in color to polished brass. Jesus Christ is a black man. And that's been hidden from our people for centuries. Now my brother you had something. What you about to say? You got a question? Hair like wool, and to my teaching, it symbolizes that he was the sheep, he was the lamb. Like if you look at a lamb, if you look at a lamb, or its hair is wool, because he was the lamb of Christ, or he was the lamb of God. Okay. So, so, and when you were, and when you are referring to color and what color he was what's really significant is is that because regardless of what color he was he came and died for all mankind who did that for you but well, that's not a just incorrect i'm gonna prove it right all right well, why is this so you said that christ's hair was woolly because he was the lamb of god right well that's similar right it symbolizes it right but that's inaccurate read in verse uh, 13 matter of fact read verse 10 and then we're gonna get daniel chapter 7 verse 9. why is this book of revelation Go ahead. Chapter 1, verse 10. Uh-huh. I was in the spirit on the Lord's so day. This is John speaking, one of one of Christ's apostles. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, which is the Sabbath day. Read. And heard behind me a great voice as of as of a trumpet. Uh-huh. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, uh -huh. the first and the last. Uh-huh. And what thou seest, write in a book. So Christ told him, he said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Last. And what you see. Write it down in a book. That's why I said the revelation of Christ. Because the true image of Christ would be hidden. Read on. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Jump down and say, uh, we, we. Yeah, 13. Read. Watch that. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. So this is what John saw. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, read. One like unto the Son of Man. One that looked like who? The Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man in the Bible? Christ. You understand? So when John looked behind him, read it again. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So John saw Christ. He said, one that looked like Jesus Christ, the man that I walked with for three years. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Uh -huh. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Go ahead. His head and his hands were white like wool. So the hair on his head, hair on his beard was white like wool. So he saw a man that looked like Christ. He didn't say, man, I see somebody look like Christ, but it looked like he might have put something in his hat. No, that man looked like Christ. But watch this. Go to Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 because the way, the reason I want to go here is because that's going to 
kind of show you that it's not just talking about because he was the Lamb of God. Because when it's talking about the Lamb of God, you mean he the sacrifice. I'm sure you know that. But why is this? Read. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. Uh -huh. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. So Daniel saw when all the kingdoms of this earth was cast down. When there was no more America, China, Russia, the UK, all these different superpowers was cast down. Read. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Who is the Ancient of Days? God. God is the Ancient of Days, meaning he's older than days. He's the one that said, let there be light. And the evening and the morning was the first day. God is older than days. But it said he did what? Did sit. Don't they teach us that God don't have an image? But it said he did sit. In order to sit, you got to have a butt to sit on. You got to have a body. You understand? That's why God said, let us make man in our image. Right. But let's see, how does it describe God? The, the Father. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. He had a white garment on, read. And the hair of his head. The hair of his head was what? Like the pure wool. The Father. Hair was like pure wool. Now, the Father is not the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God is Christ, right? God carried white. Like wool, yes. Wow. Read it again. Read it again, yeah. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, uh -huh. and the ancient of days did sit, uh -huh. whose garment was white as snow. Go ahead. And the hair of his head. The hair of God's head was like what? Like the pure wool. It was like wool. So that's actually talking about his texture. So we can't say that Revelation 1 and 14 is symbolizing him being a Lamb of God because God himself has woolly hair. You understand? When God made man in his image, he made man with dark skin and woolly hair. You understand what I'm saying? So let's find out, does it matter? Does it even matter if the Bible says Jesus is black? Does it matter, sister? You say it does matter. If it's in the Bible, that must mean it matters, right? What about you, my brother? You think it matters, right? Let's show you what the Bible says. John chapter 7, verse 38. Find that in John 14 and 6, I believe. This is the book of John. Go ahead. Chapter 7, verse 38. So let's see if Christ said it matters what he looks like. Does it even matter? Read. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said. Christ said, if you believe on me, like the Bible say. What's the scripture right here? The Bible is the scriptures. He said, you must believe on him as the scriptures say. Read. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That living water is the understanding of this Bible. You're going to be able to teach the understanding because you believe on Christ like the Bible says. So it is important what he looks like. Because guess what? If you didn't know what Christ looked like, it would be hard to find out who the real Jews are and what they look like. We'll be stuck believing that the Jews is white. You understand? You had something? I'll get that in Revelation 2 and 9. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. So dealing with those people who we was taught was Jews. Let's see what Christ said about those same people that we just been talking about. This Go is ahead. the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Uh -huh. I know thy works mm -hmm. and tribulation and poverty. So he said I know your works, tribulation and poverty. Who's in poverty? Black people. We the ones in poverty all across America. Read. But thou art rich. But we are rich because this Bible belongs to us. We are called the children of God. He chose us above everybody. This whole world was created for us. Read. And I know the blasphemy. He said, I know the blasphemy, which oh. means lies. He said, I know the lies, read, of them which say they are Jews. I know the lies of people that say they are what? Which say they are Jews. Which say they are Jews and what? And are not. But they not, read. But are the synagogue of Satan. They are the devil the Bible speaks of. Christ just said that the people that's calling themselves Jews, they not the real Jews. Because the real Jews is sitting in this room right now. With your woolly hair and your dark skin. It was made in the image of God. You had some off. Matthew 24. Go ahead. Matthew 24. You can bring that up. Matthew 24. All right. They said that God called right man. Says I see him. Yes, sir. That's it. That's in the Bible. Yes, sir. Christ is going to give us a prophecy it's about that same devil to be well. Matthew 24 and 4. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He said, Take heed that no man deceive you. <clears throat> because they have deceived us in thinking that Jesus Christ is white, and thinking the, 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 the Jews are white. 
thinking that everything white is right. They have deceived us in that. So Christ said, read it again. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man <coughs> shall deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Read on. For many shall come in my name, uh -huh. saying, I am Christ. It says that for many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ. Our whole lives, we thought that this was Jesus. We thought that this was Christ. And they still pushing that still to this day. Read it again. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Many shall come in his name, saying that he is Christ. Many have come in his name, saying that this is Jesus. So that's when, in the book, I don't know where it's at, in the Bible, it said that, uh, about he that come preaching another that's Jesus. Exactly right. I'm going to get right. right. Go okay. I'm going to get it now. Yes, mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, uh -huh. and shall deceive many. You say, many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ, they're going to deceive many. Many of our people are deceived in Christianity, in our, in our Christian churches, that that's Jesus. You're going to read that. 2 Corinthians. Yeah. Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached. So if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, saying that that's Christ, or Christ ain't got no color, or it don't matter what he look like. Or if you receive another spirit, because that's another spirit that comes with that. Well, a spirit that comes with this with this white image of Jesus, that everybody can be saved. All nations belong in the kingdom. God loves everybody. But that's not true. Y'all believe that? You believe that? You believe God loves everybody? Love everybody. 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 Everybody no matter who he is. No matter who he is, because he's all created by God. Everybody was created by God. Okay. Everybody. So, Everything. Just like that's your head. That ain't my head, right? I'm saying that's your head, right? That's not my head. I can't come over there and take the head off your head, put it on my head, walk out the door. Right? It's gonna be conflict, right? That's your head. Do you believe that God has a people? Yes. You believe God has a chosen people, a chosen seed? Yes. Who do you think those people are that we're talking about? Israel. Who do you think Israel is today? So, if God only loves Israel, how could he love everybody else? I thought he loved everybody because he created everybody. Is that not true? Second Ezra. Let me show you something. Is that not true? Let me show you something. Let me show you. Just like there's that many hats in the world, it's only your hat. You understand? You know what that says? Second Ezra 6? 654. It's 5. Listen to this. It's the book of 2nd Ezra in the Apocrypha. Chapter 6, verse 54. What we read now, though, this is the Apocrypha. This was in the 1611 King James Version Bible. The Protestant church took this book out of the Bible. You understand? To cause more confusion upon us. Because when you read in Malachi, you read, you read about the Persian and Mede captivity. And then all of a sudden it jumped to the Roman captivity when you get to the New Testament. But well, what happened to the Greeks? This is that Greek history. This is how we were known to be as known as Gentiles. This is the history that they took from us. Part of that history. Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 54. Uh -huh. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So we all come from Adam, right? We all, Adam was the first man formed, right? We all come from Adam. We all come from Adam. But we also branched off from the uh, three sons of Noah. Okay. But even out of Noah, Noah come from out of Adam. Right. But so we all come, come from out of Noah. Him, Shem, and Jeff, right? And then that branched off and they created the rest of the world. You're right. But we all come from Adam. We go back. Well, uh, of course, yeah. Okay. Read on. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, uh -huh. of him come we all. So of him come we all. Read on. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. So the people whom thou hast chosen, who was that? Israel. Israel. We are the people that God has chosen. Read on. All this have I spoken before thee, uh -huh. O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. God, most high God created the world for our sakes, not for everybody. He created the world for our sakes. As for the other people. As for the other people. Which also come of Adam. Who also come of Adam. As for the other people also come of Adam. Thou hast said that they are nothing. They what? That they are nothing. God has said that they are nothing. These other nations can't compare nothing to us. He said they are nothing. What are they like? But be like unto spit. Like unto spit. When you spit out your mouth, you just talking to spit out your mouth. Are you crying over behind that? You ain't losing no sleep behind that. He said they like unto spit. 
And what is like the whole uh, abundance of? What and has like likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. When you mop in the flow, and a, 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 it may spill a little bit. Are you gonna cry? You gonna feel it? You gonna go back and fill it right back up? You ain't gonna miss a step. You gonna continue on, continue on with your pail of water. That's really like the abundance of these other nations too. He used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.